Over the past few months, my team and I have conducted a number of resilience program evaluations for clients large and small across the United States, Europe, and Asia. This is a pretty common engagement that we do. We call it the resiliency diagnosis. And as a part of that, we're reviewing documentation and we're interviewing stakeholders and ultimately most or all of the executive team uh, at a client to understand how they view their challenges in the fields of resilience. So everything from crisis management to business continuity, physical security, information security, and, and what have you. One of the questions that we always ask towards the end of our interviews is what are some risks or threats, some things that keep you up at night with worry, things that you think maybe your company is not well prepared for. And I'm here to tell you what the trends are that we're hearing about. And there are three specific things, three specific things that have come up in these interviews. The first one is some combination of economic uncertainty and inflationary pressure. And you're like, Brian, what does this have to do with business continuity? What has a lot to do with it? Because if this is the concern on your executives' minds, then part of what you have to address as a resilience leader is what role, if any, does business continuity and crisis management play in this? So the challenge of navigating economic uncertainty and inflationary pressures are critical. Economic volatility exasperated by the um, human capital challenges of recruiting and retention, uh, of training, the lingering effects of the pandemic and perhaps even new uh, pandemic concerns that have arisen, um, geopolitical tensions, particularly those that impact um, places where companies have um, suppliers or have employees or impacted by their supply chain or supply chain disruptions and the inflationary uh, issues that have been arisen because of these, that have arisen because of these tensions. CEOs are pretty concerned about this and executives, that trickles down to executives being concerned about managing costs, about maintaining profitability and ensuring sustainable growth in this very uncertain economic environment. Companies are focused on, uh, on challenges, I'm sorry, companies are focused on strategies for cost optimization, expense optimization. They're looking at price adjustments. They're thinking about supply chain resilience. In a lot of cases, they're shifting their supply chain around in ways that they hadn't really been doing uh, in previous years. The second thing that we've heard pretty commonly is cybersecurity. And digital transformation is kind of a secondary part of that. And this, this challenge begins with just the rapid pace of digitalization, of digital transformation that was really brought on. We were headed down this path before, but the pandemic really accelerated and exasperated this. But the rapid pace of digitization, the, the more dependency day over day, week over week, month over month, that we have on technologies, collaborative technologies and others have put digital transformation at the forefront of corporate strategy that CEOs have to address. And their CEOs and your executives are continuing to look at how they can leverage technology to improve efficiency, innovate and gain competitive advantage. This translates to heightened cybersecurity risk for two reasons. One, is because of this increased reliance on digital tools and technologies. But second, that there's a rise in cyber extortion and ransomware type events, data exfiltration events, that has made this, turned this into a top priority for CEOs and your executives. They're all thinking about robust cybersecurity measures. They're all convinced that they will be subject to some significant cyber extortion or ransomware attack if not in the months to come, then in the next few years. And they're thinking about how to respond to that. They're thinking about how prepared are we? How can we keep these people out? But if they get in, how can we successfully navigate that? And there's a huge role here to play for business continuity, and crisis management, and crisis communications professionals. The third concern, the third risk that we're hearing from executives when we talk with them has everything to do with human capital. It has everything to do with recruiting and retention and training of the skilled labor force and the skilled managers needed to function in today's economy. It's often, you know, we've heard about the, the big quit, the big resignation, a great resignation, um, and all of these changes that have come about as a result of the pandemic or were exasperated by the pandemic. But recruiting, attracting, and retaining top talent has become a significant concern for CEOs and boards and executives. The pandemic has shifted employee expectations 
and probably shifted the balance of power a little bit towards employees that it maybe wasn't there before. This leads to a greater emphasis on work-life balance, on remote working options, and on meaningful work. CEOs are finding challenges with developing more flexible, employee-centric workplaces and enhancing the value proposition of their company to attract and retain skilled employees. That's involved more competitive competition and benefits, but also a focus on organizational culture, professional development opportunities, and employee engagement strategies. This challenge really ties into business continuity and crisis management in a lot of ways because this is a continuity challenge. Um, how do you, re, you know, if, if you can't have the key personnel, the minimum key personnel necessary to carry out the work, what do you do? And so this has become a greater challenge that I think business continuity, crisis management, and resilience professionals as a whole need to be thinking about. That's it for this week's video. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.